<laughs> you know, it's hard to get good help. <laughs> That's funny. Especially when you don't ask for it. <laughs> so just this is is everything. Everything. There's nothing that's not it, be it a thought, a bug, an itch, these words, the sky, pain, all of it. There's just nothing that's not it. So there's no separate you that is actually separate. There's just this appearing as a sense of location, or I think Jim Newman calls it contracted energy. I'll, I, I just call it location. It's a sense that I'm here, but where where is here? Where is here? Here, here is the magic. So sometimes you'll hear in spirituality about somebody having a shift, or you often hear seekers say, oh, tell us about your shift or how it happened for you. Well, that's not what's being shared here. What's being shared here is there's already no one there to have a shift. I think um, when you ask that question, Don, what comes up for me is uh, Nkosi, who is Nkosi? Maybe he's just this form of loving energy that shows me and, and uh, brings it out in me. And I feel we're just one. I don't think the names matter or whatever, but that's what I feel when I'm with him. I, I come to that place in me where I feel maybe he is, and that's beautiful. I come to not where he is, but do you know what I mean? Um, I, I can feel this love in my heart, so so it seems that he brings me there, but just his presence that washes away some of the things I had hidden in front of it. Maybe that's a better way of saying that. Yeah, he's so accepting is the word that came to me. He's anything is okay with him. It just doesn't matter. It's it, you're you're already this. Anything you say or do is just this. So this never becomes anything. This never goes anywhere. This isn't trying to improve. It's not trying to become a better this, although trying to approve can appear in this. But if if and when that happens, it's not a separate you. It's this imagining that there's an activity. One second, let me let Zoe in. That there's an activity or something I can do. That's the, the mode of a seeker is action, doing achieve getting somewhere this isn't it but the message here is regardless of how this appears it's always this Um, just as a comment for Don, um, if you if you don't want to see Cosi as a as a separate person, the words of the Bible just popped into my head where it says something about a voice in the wilderness. 
it's a bit like that with Cozy. If you don't want to see him as an actual person, he's a voice in the wilderness of suffering and shame, really. Are, are, aren't we all, though, Faith? Sorry? Aren't we all? Isn't this a voice in the wilderness? Isn't it yeah, yeah. that speaks as a voice in the wilderness? Well, well, yeah, I suppose, yes, I suppose it is. But if you wanted to take the embodiment bit away from it, it's just voices, isn't it? Going yeah. To, yeah. to and fro. Yeah. Mm. Or vibration. Right. And like when you see a movie soundtrack, right, Leighton, you're an actor. Mm -hmm. It's it's a soundtrack. It's it's everybody's equally on it. The bomb going off, the clock ticking, the person speaking, it's all equally that or the soundtrack, you could say. Mm -hmm. So that's in a way as a pointer. Everything is this already, already. And as you guys know, that's my favorite word already, mm -hmm. because that kills the seeking if it's really heard. Because, and there's no one there to hear it, but it can still be heard or intuited or, you know, use, use your favorite word, but it means literally everything. So you can never outrun this because whatever it is you're thinking is this already. It's these words already. It's whatever you're about to say, whatever you're about to speak will be this, not you. Yeah, like and about the vibration, I was just getting a picture of a graph, like if the voices would be recorded on a, a graph, wouldn't they? Sometimes they're high and low and mm -hmm. just go along like that. Mm. There, is, there, is, there is more dialogue with the apparent separate entity in the Bible or even Bhagavad Gita. If you follow out of the wilderness, out of the out of the whirlwind, the book of Job, where there is this divinity, call it what you like, but it's ineffable, it's a non-person, it's very much akin to the words of Nikosi speaking, but there is an expression of this voice speaking to someone that perceives suffering and separation. And through the actually more of a monologue moves Job to recognize that he is but dust and ashes. He despises his words that he had heard something and now sees that something and comes to a point of revelation, very much of what we're experiencing as the apparent disembodied voice of an Nkosi speaks, but there's more of a particularity occurring in the Bible or when Arjuna speaks, uh, excuse me, Krishna speaks to Arjuna or even don't eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There's something qualitatively instructional to an apparent separate suffering entity and someone that is disembodied compassionately inviting them to awaken to something else and then recognize there is no one. There's only this or only God. So there's a qualitative difference that I can feel comforted by the two expressions, whether it's in the Bible or Krishna speaking or Nikosi speaking, it's the same voice out of the whirlwind.
I know this might sound a little odd to say, but I'll say it anyway. Um, you know, I look at each one of your pictures and look at each one of you, and I, I feel like I know something about each one of you personally. Michael has shared about his hospital and illnesses. Uh, Layton has shared about his movie and his act actors. And uh, anyway, I just I could go on and on, but I know nothing about you, Michael. I hear you speaking these truths. I hear you speaking about certain authors. I hear you speaking about the Bible, but I don't know anything about you. <laughs> there and, isn't anyone to know about. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that leaves me feeling a little bit more personal towards you than it does the rest. Except, say that again, Alice, I'm sorry. It, it just makes me feel more impersonal toward you, not as warm toward you as I might feel toward the rest. Okay. I just, I'm just saying that, like I said, it may not mean anything, but I just felt I wanted to say what I said. That's all right. That's okay. That's already what is. I'm sure glad and cozy doesn't talk to me like that. Well, I don't know if I was talking to you specifically, but it's just as the wind doesn't blow for an individual, but for the community. Sorry, I listen. I listened to Kenneth Madden a bit, and um, and he's a non non duality speaker. Um, he said something, and I can't. I, I'd like to be able to remember the quote. I wanted to remember to quote him exactly, but I, but I can't remember. But but basically. I think you might understand it if I say that, like the me person, the, the separate me person, is a bit like a weed, like a weed that you don't want. I know everything's this, but like, just go with it for a minute. <laughs> like a weed. And like I've been going to listen to spiritual speakers for some time, and it's like this weed gets. A, a bit um, cut off it or a bit poisoned or a bit weakened, something, yeah, something to the leaves of the weed, whatever. But this message that I hear here, it gets at the root of the thing. That's what I was trying to say last week. This, this message just brings everything to a stop. It, yeah, and it's at the... It, cuts at the root of the me, where other speakers really seem to be playing around the edges of it or, you know, like meditation and those sort of things. It doesn't really get to the root of the, of the suffering. Yeah. Yeah, because almost every practice you can name faith, it gives instruction, gives a, a path, a journey, steps. You do this, that, and the other. Meditate. Nothing wrong with that. is is beautiful, but all that's being said here at this meeting is you're already what you seek. The seeker mm. and the saw are the same. They're not two. Yeah, and I was interested. I was looking for a particular photo in your. On your Facebook page, which I didn't find, but that's all right. Um, and in it, I saw a couple of photos of Muji. And like I've, I've been interested in Muji a while ago. And I looked at the date that you had with your Muji photos, and it was like 2014 or something. Yeah. So, so uh, like. I so I relate to that because it's like I've been on this 
path going through the speakers and finally landed here like like you. I was probably moodying, you know, <laughs> in around about the same time as you. <laughs> oh, she made Muji into a verb. <laughs> yeah, I tried, Faith. I, I, I tried hardcore probably 10 years, Muji. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was just the right, he was to me like the perfect amount of love and humor and deepness and, pro. you know, he seemed like the whole package. Didn't he start his own city like up in Alaska or somewhere <laughs> in Oregon? He started his own Portugal. city. He's huh? in Portugal. Portugal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you maybe you confuse him with Osho, who started who had oh, Osho, his, yes, that's that it. was that's in it. Oregon. That's it. That's it. It, it yeah. ended very badly. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. There is parallels, but uh Murchi <laughs> seems to be much mm -hmm. healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, Faith, I, I don't know how it was for you and anybody else here or anyone watching this video, but I really, after 10 years, gave up. I, I just couldn't be awareness enough. It, it wasn't, if, it, if I had to keep coming to Muji, something smelled off to me. It still was outside me, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I've also been, I've been listening to Muji lately too. I mean, for years, but recently and other people. And when I listen to them, it may not be what we're speaking here or, or flavors of it or different things, but I've noticed that then I'll have a reaction. It's like, oh, Muji, he doesn't know what he's talking about or whoever I'm listening to. And, and as I do that, then I, I make the separation. Muji, me, his point of view, my point of view, and Kosi's point of view. And then I turn it into all that. And at other times when I'm watching him, I'll go, oh, it's all this. Muji is on the YouTube doing what he's doing. I'm sitting there having my reaction to Muji and, um, and all of it, all of it is okay. And sometimes I can sort of not divide it, not separate it out. And in that way, Muji's here, Kenneth Madden is here, Michael Jeffries is over here, and Kosi's over here, Ramana Maharishi's over here, and, uh, and, and the non-believers over there or the skeptic or whatever. And it's like, that's all this. It's like, there, there's nobody to condemn or to judge yeah. or, to, or to uplift or to uplift and say, oh, but this person. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's like, that's what we're talking about here. Just what you said. Yeah, very, very well said, Don, because it's the it's the end of getting. And also, uh, it's it's the end of forming a response or, or, or somebody being here that takes a position and forms a response and thinks to know better or all that. Yeah, it's just that there's nobody here already to make any choices. It's just all happening. You know, I was looking at a photograph and if you look at a photograph, you know, if like, if you take a picture looking down at your body, so you see your torso and your feet and the ground beneath you. If you notice everything's included in the picture, your body's not separate from the image. It's a part of, so right now, take a look. Everything that's appearing is appearing in this, and your body is not separate from the room, what we call the air, the chair. There's no separation here. The body in this and all are all appearing in the same space, if you will.
Well, it's just that it's just that um, there are different speakers, like like we've just spoken about. But when I sense that I've got myself off kilter and I'm struggling with some maybe a personal relationship or something, where I go to get re-centred or grounded or whatever, um, and I know you don't like all those words, but but I I would not switch on Nuji to listen to, to get myself back to where I want to be or where I belong or something. I would switch on Cozy and be listening to that. But that's And sometimes, look, it's just like, I've said it before, it's like a lullaby. It's just like he's singing a lullaby to me. And, and this morning when I was trying to get myself back to where I'm supposed to be. Anyway, um, yeah, I realised I don't really have to even concentrate too much on what he's saying because, yeah, it's like a... Maybe it like it washes over me, but little bits pop out that that I respond to. Yeah, <laughs> and it, and it just does me good. <laughs> By the way, you guys all heard we're we're on Kindle now. It. It, it took uh, two and a half days for me to figure out how to upload all the requirements and mm. the book kept me, uh, misformatting every time I did it. And then they want a table of contents. So, mm. but I'm really happy it paid off. It's, it's up mm -hmm. live now, it's available. And uh, I just couldn't be happier to, to see this book out there. I, I don't think there's anything else, else out there like it, if I'm, if I'm being candid. So let's all do a review on it, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, what else? Let's all do a review on it. Yeah, yeah. Love for you, anyone, to drop a review on Amazon. Uh, share your thoughts. Be great. Will you put on all is this? Sorry? Will you put on Kindle All Is This? No, no. Now, you mean the first book? Yes. No, no. Inkosi and I both like this new one much better. And Inkosi likes this one better, and I do too. It's it's just a com more complete, it's both of us. So you get a little hint, you get a lot of him, you get some of me, and we, it, we stay on you. You know, I was thinking today how the way, this is spoken about here and with Nkosi, it, it really puts the direct path to shame. You know, because that's supposed to be the highest teaching in non-duality, right? Is this this direct path you'll you'll hear of. And I'm like, well, this just is this is even it's not even the direct path. You know what I'm saying? It's there's literally already no one there to do anything there's only ever what is happening the direct path you know we've been talking that there really isn't a path so there couldn't be a direct or an indirect path if there isn't anywhere to go if all is this yeah it'd be called the end of a path Right, the pathless, the pathless path. But there really, there was never anybody on the path. Right. When I spoke about um, the Bhagavad Gita or the biblical sections, there presupposes someone on the path. And that is not exactly what is behind the uh, presentation of the Kosi, that there is no path, the direct path, but 
but even that doesn't suffice, that there's the pathless path, that there's always a quality of intermediaries, the compassionate uh, concessions of a muji, or uh, even in the Bible, perhaps. When I think of uh, religion, Michael, those paths are extremely long sometimes, you know, st stretching out over reincarnations and many lifetimes. And, you know, it's like long, long journeys from here to some distant goal. Uh, so it, I it, see it, that as the opposite, as the direct opposite of, of this is all there is. It, it can be, but but speaking here, there's been illumination, not as not as direct as the the illumination as a Nikosi, but there are brilliant understandings of of life and creation, and that may be more of an indirect path, and it may take time, but for others, it's epiphanic. It's in the moment revelation occurs. Right. And, you know, as you were speaking, I was just thinking one, one of the key distinctions might be, number one, th there is no place to go. And number two, there isn't anybody that would go anywhere. So it, it, it just doesn't have these typical components of the seeking and the striving and, 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 and yeah, and not something missing something to be achieved and so on that's what's so crystalline about nikosi there aren't the out of concession to the intermediates it's just simply a direct loving expression and alice says that she sort of like a lullaby <laughs> i didn't say that <laughs> i'm paraphrasing excuse me well, I didn't say that. Thank you. You said it was like a warm down mattress or something at one point. But no matter, it's that you are rested and sated with the language, the words of Nikosi. I'm sorry if I misspoke about your actual words. So I just have to say, Getting rested or is all is is nice. Okay. I, I, listen, I sat with Nkosi the other day. We're spending a lot of time together working on the book and you know, starting to, you know, get it out and promote it. And you know, this is not anyone doing it. It's just what seems to be happening. If it happens, great. If if it doesn't happen, it's okay too. You know, this doesn't need anything to happen. Unlike the me. That me is that imaginary, the me is this, but with the overlay of needing something to happen. There's no doer. because there's no separation. If there were separation, if that was real, then yeah, you could claim to be a separate doer, but without separation. So it's, it's, and there's no answer for why this would do this. I don't know if any of you saw the, in, I've been putting these short little videos to, to get to share about the book, little two minute clips. And, you know, I asked Nkosi, well, why would this make a mosquito to sting me? Huh? What's up with that, Nkosi? And you got to watch his answer. It's just, it's so good. I'm going to use it uh, on the Kindle. You're allowed to upload a video. And I thought his his little, it's almost like a parable, Michael. So you, you might like it because it's almost, he tells like a little parable about the mosquito. Yes, no, I, I heard it and listened to it. Yeah, just... right? It's like a two minute parable. It's just beautiful. It was brilliant. Yeah.
Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, <clears throat> I'm not a reader, so I'm, I can't be putting reviews on Kindle or anything else. I'm just in love and, and nurtured and nourished by those. Um, I'm still listening to what you put to music of Alison. Mm -hmm. the, that's just, yeah. That's, that very, <laughs> thank that you. Yeah, you know. thanks for reminding those. I don't know if any of you uh, have gone back and checked those out, but there's 43, count them, 43 sessions that I, that Al, first of all, Allison and Kosi were so generous, really, Alice. It was so beautiful to share. Mm -hmm. Because really, people would be curious, like, well, what is the private like with Nkosi? Yeah. So, you, so I cut out and pasted together and put that lovely music, and you just hear his voice. So you can, you know, put it on in the background, do your housework, go to sleep to it, and wow, there's just nothing like it. Yeah, and see, the thing is, Michael, that like you can play them over and over again, and you get something new out of them, or I don't, yeah. I mean, they never, never. Ever fresh. They're, yeah, they're never repetitive. No, yeah. ever fresh. Now, <laughs> what can, yeah, you can't, <laughs> this, this, this is ever fresh. Yeah. Already. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael, I, I saw that it keeps reappearing on YouTube, the purple guy. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the video, but Barth Nader or whatever. He had that one that you put a picture of Nicosi on uh, of our talk that now has 5,000 views. Anyway, wow. just. And probably 1,000 of those was mine. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, uh, an instant of critical thinking was that in the like today it seems like there is a a lot of conversation about the past or incidents that are not like in the immediate, well, we bring them in the immediacy of the present moment. And I was just, there, there was a sense of wanting to be just here rather than somewhere else in time. Because I, I spent a lot of my day, uh, in my mind, goes to other points in time or pulls up pulls up memories or something so what what's what's doing that peter it seems like a habit well that's a label so uh, that's the thing there's no explanation for what's happening there's just what's happening and no one's doing it. So you're not doing it, Peter. You don't, I hear it, right? I hear that a lot. People say, well, I had it, Michael, but I lost it. And I've been trying to get it back ever since, right? No, mm -hmm. no you, you didn't have it and you didn't lose it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this, this may be a slight deviation, but, uh, on my way to where I am right here, I once drove into a little barricade that somebody put up so you don't drive into their dr uh, 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 driveway. And, and, and I think I damaged it slightly, but I just fled the scene basically. And every, and I have to go past there every day or often. And every time I feel guilt that I didn't stop and go out and talk to the people. I'm not sure if I did damage or not, but but it was so. It's it, it has become an interesting obsession that when I approach that particular house, 
I I kind of like try to look the other way or something or I just like I want to get it out, out of my system and or something like that. Well, uh, Peter, I want to add that uh, you know your thoughts aren't yours, and your and you know um, your guilt isn't yours either. So when you have these feelings of guilt, you you want to claim them, and you want to claim your thoughts as yours. So you know once you get the mind in that frame, then and, and you know accidents don't happen. Actually, Leighton, as you were speaking, I, th I it I like I want to get rid of them. I, I like for them to not keep. Like I said, they're not presence. they're not yours. There's nothing to get rid of. Well, you're saying that, but of course, you know, <laughs> they appear as if they're mine. Right. It's just getting the claiming out of the way. The claiming of them as yours. I mean, they, they, they may not be yours, like Leighton is saying. And I would say that I'm not telling you what to do at all. That's not the point at all, at all. I wouldn't do it. But <laughs> if you if you have to drive the other way on your way to work and it causes <laughs> you an upset, and I get that, I mean, I'd say, and, and that's not you when you didn't do it, da 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 but if you probably talked to the person and paid for the damage, whatever, I'm not telling you to do that. It, it, you could probably then and pay for the damage. You go, oh, good, thank you. You could probably drive without the upset and, no, and nothing's happening, right? Okay. <laughs> but what's interesting is whenever I hear somebody say, I'm not gonna, I don't mean then I, and you can bet that that's where it's coming from, but uh, <laughs> You know, it it is what it is, and I appreciate it's kind of fun. You might just stop the car there to check your tire and see that there was no damage. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll sleep better. Well, you know, it's interesting, actually. Uh, I have succeeded somewhat to get it out of my system by I'm I'm redirecting my attention elsewhere. And, it, I, you know, I'm not saying that this is the best solution or or a solution. Maybe that's what I'm saying. But but I'm, I'm starting to forget about it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I certainly don't feel a need that anything needs to be done about it, uh, for sure. It's not, you know, it's not causing any any uh, it's not it's not severe enough to require any intervention. It's an interesting phenomenon that I shared as an example of how the mind works when it's like there's all these anchors out there that trigger some kind of a memory or some story that comes up. And then, you know, and then I call that my life, that story. It's my, my life is just an accumulation of all these stories that are triggered by, by stuff out there. Of course, nothing is real, as we know. Search, opinion, politics, business. <laughs> A bomber. Oh, no, no, I think that was an inside job. <laughs> I'm trying to shut my phone off, excuse me. So there's just this. There's just what's happening. So feelings of guilt, anger, frustration, annoyance. You may have experienced all of those feelings in the last hour. Are all this. They're all perfectly this. And wanting to get rid of the guilt is this too. And then, of course, it's going to be here in a moment. Whoops, there he is. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just seems like something's missing with all, all, all is this. 
it just seems like something's missing. I'm going back to Peter, but I'll, I'll go to me for the things that I, I've done that I haven't owned, so to speak, or you know, I've hurt other people or taken money, whatever. So to bring it to me, it's like all that is that all is this already. I can use that as a reason. I can use that as a, use it as an excuse, not as a truth or the way Nkosi would speak it. I could use it as an excuse. Well, I don't have to do this because it's all this already and it's all okay. So if I, using me, if I yell at my wife, okay, which I did this morning in an argument. Well, that's this, that's this too. It's beautiful. Uh, and, but then there's always that lingering thing, but you know, I, maybe I should say, I'm sorry. Mainly for me. Um, It just seems like there's a little irresponsibility in, in, in holding the non-duality as like, like a, uh, a reason. Does that make sense what I'm saying at all? I no. understand what yeah. you're saying is that, you know, but, other people talk about everything goes. You, you, uh, that there's a sense that it, uh, there is a moral objection to everything goes is the topic that I've heard discussed. Good. Well, let's see what Nkosi has to say. Welcome, Nkosi. <laughs> hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, well, uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to uh, summarize the question, uh, Nkosi, that Michael refers to what maybe what you want to talk about. Don brings up uh, 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 maybe a conflict or not a concern. Do you have a con Don has a concern that uh, all is this could lead to an amoral situation where uh, there is no more a distinction between right or wrong, uh, and so on and so forth. Is that fair, Don? Um, it, it, it's that. It's also just how you're going to feel more than the right and the wrong, if every time you get to that person or that thing that you th felt you did something wrong with, and if you feel something about it, not that there's not the, not that it was moral or immoral or right or wrong, it was just what happened. But if, if, if one is left feeling like when they see that person or go to that situation, they contract, right? They contract and have to turn away from that person. That's the thing I'm talking about to relieve that contraction. And that we could use the philosophy of all is this to stay contracted because it may feel difficult to uncontract. So in simple terminology, Don said he had a disagreement with his wife this morning and he was feeling, I believe a little bit um, perhaps guilty about it, and he thought maybe he should apologize to her and say, I'm sorry. So what this comes down to is, uh, is saying, I'm sorry, just placating someone, or is it, uh, what, where does that fit in maybe just to make my, I, I just have a somewhat of a disagreement with someone here, and I'm thinking to apologize for, I don't know what, I don't, don't know what, but I just wanna make nice. I don't know if that falls in the same line of what you're saying. But I'm not going to because nothing really happened. Um, I I don't want to make nice, but you know there's kind of a yearning to want to make everything okay, even if we say the lies. Like I'm sorry and don't mean it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I I would say uh, there's just what's happening, and what seems to be happening is not happening to anybody. It's got nothing to do with the separate self. An argument may arise, conflicts may arise, but there's just arising. 
there's no one behind behind them. You know, even an imagination of being a separate self, that doesn't mean that there's a real somebody there. It's just this, everything arising as, as that or appearing as that. So if there's argument, swearing may appear and also an apology may seem to appear but there's nobody doing it. There's nobody who's apologizing. You know, there's nobody who's swearing. Even though it may appear that way, but it's just everything that appears as to be like that. It appears to be that. There's no real separate people or wife or husband who has been angry. It's just totality which is this appearing as that. So an apology may arise, an apology may never arise, but uh, that's not to say there's somebody who refuses to apologize or there's somebody who starts at a conflict, you know, it's just everything appearing as that, it comes and goes, it doesn't last. Everything comes and goes. It appears and disappears. So <laughs> confusion, when it seems to arise, there may be an imagination that, oh, I'm confused. Something may seem to be imposed or appear and say, oh, I'm confused. But really, it, it doesn't really belong to anyone. You know, those are just thoughts. Those are just appearances. They are nothing really, nothing special. Already, there's no right and wrong. There's no right and wrong. There's just what seems to happen. The thinker of thoughts, the thinker, somebody who says, or I, I think I have to apologize, or I started an argument. You know, <laughs> that's another thought. And when thoughts are looked for, they can never really be found. They are fleeting. It seems to be there, but it's not really there. Already, there is no man or woman to argue about anything. There's just this appearing as that. And it's got nothing to do with the, the imaginary separate self. Because even that, the imaginary separate self is also what is totality, wholeness appearing as that. So there's no real separation. All these are just stories and they are going nowhere. There's no beginning as there's no end. There may be a thought that says, oh, I'm going somewhere, but it's also <laughs> everything appearing as that. <laughs> there isn't anybody who's really going somewhere. So it can only be this arguing uh, with itself, having uh, conversations, uh, apologizing to itself, uh, wondering, accusing itself. You know, it's, they, there are no people already. There are no human beings. There's no center. There's just emptiness. There is no you already to disappear. Because you never even appeared. Uh, 
as a separate self. There's no separation. There is only everything. And that's <laughs> that's the message. Well, it's not even a message. I would, I would say uh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing, and it's not directed to anyone. Because there's just emptiness, yeah. Emptiness appearing as everything. A unity of all things. No division. And judgment may seem not to arise. Because there are no individuals. It's just everything. Who is to judge who? So really, this doesn't mind. Swearing may appear. Uh, misunderstanding may appear. Love may appear. Joy may appear. All these are appearing. In this disappear. And this is not a thing that can be pointed to. It's not a thing that can be grasped, can never really be known. Because even what seems to be the knower is already the unknown. So the knower is never really there. There's no knower. There's just unknowing. And nothing to be known. But I know that's a thought. That's an appearance. <laughs> that's an unknown. That is an uh, unknowing appearing as that. <laughs> So there is no why, there's no why. It's just what's happening. And what's happening has got nothing to do with you. It's just what's happening. It comes and goes. All the appearances, they come and go. And they are also not separate from this. There's just this, I would say, dancing, appearing to dance. <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay, everything is beautiful. There's nothing to be done. There's nobody to do anything. There's nowhere to get to. There's nothing to be grasped. The doer of things is already not there. It's imaginary. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's what's coming up. I have to say, as I was listening, it's interesting. I I love what you say, and I hate what you say. <laughs> it goes like back and forth. You say something, it's like, yeah, yeah, oh man, I feel free, and then, and then something in me go, you say something else, and I go, no, no. I hate that. I hate that. So it's sort of like 
I, I think I'm like bipolar spirituality or something like that. Just like going nuts and uh, and I guess all that is all that is this that it's okay to love what you say in a moment. It's okay to hate what you say, and that's what I'm sort of left with. So I do thank you. I mean, I do this. I gotta say it again. These meetings are just. I don't know what happens in these meetings. I don't have a clue. I don't know, but. It seems magical for me over here. Yeah. Uh, just, it's like magic. Maybe that's the this that I'm referring to. But it's, um, I, I appreciate it, really. This is, um, in this apparent life that I have, this is a gift to me. This is a, a real gift. Um, and I want to receive that gift, embody that gift, so to speak, and then share that gift, you know, or, or, or live that gift, so to speak. So um, I appreciate all of you, this, this whole group. That's it. I could keep going, but like, I just uh, settle in my heart here and uh, I'll, I'll love you now without talking. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, Don. <laughs> Beautiful. I was I was just thinking when that, that yeah, thanks, Don. I was just thinking um what it must be like to be in cozy skin and to come on to this group like like a group of slow learn. It's like because you keep repeating the same thing over and over and I said, do you get tired of repeating? It's like you're coming to a group of slow learners who just can't get it, and you just have to repeat it, repeat it, repeat. It sounds like it's very boring to, to be in your skin. Is it boring to come on and keep repeating it, Cozy? Yeah, I, I would say uh, this as well is enjoyed. Uh, Something about this is enjoyed here. Uh, there's so much love, unconditional love that may seem to arise. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Good. I wouldn't like to think you were bored. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'm good. Well, even though boring is part of this, I know all that. <laughs> there's nobody really there good. to be bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I need somebody to come in with it. Mm -hmm. It's usually Dan that picks up on me. But anyway, thank you. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I like Dawn. I'll just, it just beautiful. Mm. Yeah, welcome. Mm. Any last comments or questions before we close out this evening? Yeah, you are good and cozy. Thank you so much, everybody, to each and every one of you. We so love and appreciate all of you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone.